Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Seven Four Four. So today, guys, I want to talk to you guys about Real Madrid nil, Barcelona four, and I still cannot believe it. I still am in utter disbelief. I cannot believe what just happened because this all Clasico was crazy. Because if you had told me Barcelona would win four nil to uh, burn about the start of the season, I would be laughing. It's like four nil to burn about. Are you having a laugh? Are you joking around? But the thing is, even though I would be laughing at the time, I should have realized that Barcelona is, have won at the Bernabeu by big score margins in the past. In fact, it happened in 2022, it happened in 2016, and I believe it happened uh, under the early pep days when we won 6-2 at the Bernabeu. It's been a common occurrence. In fact, it's been happening quite often. And Barcelona has been known to be doing this. And so... Let's go over that first half. That first half was largely even. I thought the first half was largely even. I would probably argue that Real Madrid was slightly better, though, with the amount of offside chance, with the amount of chances they had, in particular with Mbappe. But all those chances that Mbappe had, most of them were offside. In fact, all the chances that Mbappe had was just pretty much offside. And you have to give credit to Hansi Flick. He played the offside trap brilliantly in the first half, and it was such an amazing tactical and genius plan from Hansi Flick. And then obviously Vinicius had that chance there, which he should be scoring in the 22nd minute. And in the second half, man, the floodgates opened. Barcelona made that halftime change, bringing Frank de Jong on, and that was a great change. And Casado just cut through the Real Madrid defense, Real Madrid midfield, and puts a great pass for Lewandowski, and Lewandowski scores brilliantly. And, you know, Lewandowski scores against Real Madrid. A lot of people like to accuse Robert saying that, oh, you're a small game, Robert. You're not a big game player. Well, here he showed up. He's a big game player. And I had my doubts. I had my reservations. And he proved me wrong massively by scoring that amazing goal. Scoring that goal. And then if that if that wasn't enough, he scored a second goal. A beautiful cross in. A beautiful pass from Frankie De Jong to Balde. And Balde puts a peach of a cross in for Lewandowski to make it 2-0. And at this point, you knew that it was kind of getting dicey for Real Madrid. Real Madrid actually had some good momentum after the second goal was scored by Barca. With Mbappe and Jude. And in particular with some half-hearted chances. But they weren't able to convert. And Yaki Pena made some crucial 1v1 saves. And shout out to Yaki Pena, who I thought was amazing on the day. And then the third goal, man. Great cross. A great pass there from Rafinha to Yamal. And Yamal makes it 3-0. And then, obviously, um, the fourth goal was scored by Rafinha. Great pass there from Yaku Martinez to Rafinha. And Rafinha makes it 4-0. And Barca, man. That midfield was amazing. I thought Pedri was superb. I thought Caseda was great. I honestly thought Frank De Jong was great as well. I thought Barsi was amazing with his tackles on Vinicius in particular. He pretty much man-marked Vinicius on the day, which is why Vinicius was pretty much quiet on the day. I thought Yanko Martinez was great. I thought Balde was great. I even thought Kunde was amazing too. I thought Kunde defensively was fantastic. Pena was great as well. Barcelona has just been amazing. We have the best front three right now in the world. Lewandowski, Rafinha, Yamal. There's no other... There's there's not a front three right now and currently in the world football that is more informed than this. And we also are the best team in the world right now, in my opinion, because the amount of goals we scored. I believe we scored the most goals in the top five leagues with 37 goals in the top five leagues. I don't think any other team has scored this amount of 37 goals across the, uh, so far this season, and that's commendable. You have to give credit to what Hansi Flick has done with this team because coming into the season, I was very skeptical. I was very pessimistic. I was like, bro, we had such a terrible last season. We went trophyless. I was thinking we may even go trophyless back to back. Uh, but Hansi Flick proved me otherwise by making some big changes over the summer, by getting rid of the likes of Gundogan, which was a controversial decision, which I was completely against, and bringing Danny Olmo, which I was like, eh, wasn't really a good idea. But, you know, it showed that it was actually the right decision because um, Danny Olmo could do the pressing. And that's Barca team is really very pressing-based, and I think it was very, very good to see. And his offside traps as well. We get the best out of the likes of Rafinha, making Rafinha into a very good winger, one of the best wingers right now in the world of football. He made, because under Xavi, Rafinha looked very average, looked very underwhelming. And then made Lewandowski to one of the best strikers as well. Because under Levin, under Xavi, Lewandowski was dropping deep. He, was, he wasn't he was at the end of things. And now this season, you can see how prolific he's been. He's also giving game time to Casado, which Xavi didn't give game time at all last season. And he's Xavi, and, um, Flick has given the confidence to Yamal to have him have the license to do whatever he wants. And obviously, we also saw this under Xavi, but you can see Yamal being more effective under uh, Flick here. And Barca has been amazing, man. The 4 2 3 one's been fantastic. It's been superb. I've been really, really happy to see what Barca have done this season. And we, ha we haven't recorded some big wins and the Champions We haven't recorded it. Like the last time we won a big game in the Champions League was probably against Liverpool 2019. 
that's probably the last time prior to these two games that we beat both Ben Madrid and Bayern Munich the same week by mark by scoring four goals. I had to give credit to this for a flip what he's done because I was very pessimistic coming into the season, and I still had some pessimism as the season went on. But now you can tell this Barca is the real deal. We are the real deal, guys. This team is for real. And as for Real Madrid, they were simply underwhelming on the day. There was not a single good Real Madrid player. I thought the only good Real Madrid player today was Kamavinga. Although the rest of the players was terrible. Vinicius in particular was awful. Kubarsi pretty much man-marked him. I thought Mbappe wasn't great, you know, with the amount of offside, deci- offside decisions. And you have to time your own to better Mbappe. You just simply have to. And, and at this stage of your career, you should know this by now, since you're arguably considered one of the best players right now in the world of football. Jude Bellingham didn't have a good game. I thought he was very underwhelming when he was pretty effective in the last previous set class. He goes, I thought uh, Valverde, Chiuameni, they were decent. They, they, they weren't that great, in my opinion. They were okay. Kamavinga was, I thought, was amazing. The Real Madrid backline wasn't great. Militao, Rudiger, Vasquez, um, for Lamendi, and then Lunin as well, man. Lunin, some of those goals Lunin conceded was pretty awful. And so for Real Madrid, man, we exposed them. We beat them just like we did. Uh, just like we've been doing the last couple of seasons. And for Barcelona, man, this is amazing. This is a statement win at the Bernabeu. We're now six points clear at the top of the table. We're essentially La Liga favorites now because even if Real Madrid do beat us in the next El Clasico, they'd have to basically do by a margin of four. And I just don't think it's going to be realistic. I just don't think Real Madrid is capable of doing that. And remember, the next El Clasico is like literally towards in May. So by the time the next El Clasico rolls around, that game may already be a dead rubber because the league may have already been decided by then. So my thing for Real Madrid is that they put themselves in a very streaky position when it comes to the league title because Carlo Ancelotti, man, as good as a manager you are, you're obviously one of the best managers in the world. You've got four Champions League titles for a reason. You are yet to defend a league title, which I think is disgraceful. As a manager, as a top manager you are, not defending your league title is insane. And let's be real, guys, heading into the season, Real Madrid were the favorites to win La Liga this season. They were the favorites. And for Barcelona, man, we could actually win a trouble this season. We could genuinely win a trouble this season. Given how good we have been so far this season, how we destroyed the two big teams, we can win a trouble this season. There's actually a genuine possibility. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you guys agree with my assessment, guys? Do you think Barca can win a trouble? Do you guys think Real Madrid's in trouble? And yeah, let me know all that in the comments below. I'm sure I'll be looking at your guys' comments. And I hope you guys did enjoy. Peace out.